All right. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Joe Bacella here at Chaken Analytics, and I'd like to welcome you to our presentation of ACE, your stock track portfolio. How to use Chaken Analytics to find stocks and buy and build a winning portfolio. Presenting today is Mark Chaken, founder and CEO of Chaken Analytics. Mark is known for developing the Chaken Power Gauge Rating. Presenting along with Mark is Nick Webb, Director of Sales and Business Development at Chaken Analytics. Nick has spent 30 years in the financial services industry and has worked with over 70% of the top investment management firms in the United States. Now, throughout our presentation, please submit your questions throughout the webinar using the Zoom Q&A window, which you can access in the upper left-hand corner of your screen. As a reminder, this webinar is being recorded and a copy will be sent to everyone who is registered. To get us started, here's Mark Chaikin. Thank you, Joe, and welcome, everybody. Uh, after a two and a half year partnership with StockTrack, which gives you all access to the Chaken Power Gauge rating and our research reports on the platform, and also gives you complimentary access to our full blown Chaken Analytics product, which is now being used by not just high net worth individuals, but big fund management and hedge fund companies, uh, it's a great pleasure to give you a hands on look at Chaken Analytics through the eyes of the founder, as well as one of our newest and most important hires, Nick Webb, who's Executive Vice President of Sales and Business Development. This afternoon's webinar is going to be in two parts. I'm going to do a very tight and brief PowerPoint presentation that speaks initially to the market in general, and then more specifically to Chaken Analytics. And then Nick Webb is going to take you through a hands-on run-through of the Chaken Analytics platform. The goal here is to help you create a better and more profitable portfolio so that your course grades go up and you develop some confidence about investing in the stock market using a disciplined set of tools and a rules-based methodology. So let me start by introducing myself. I've been on Wall Street for over 50 years. I've lived through 10 bear markets, so I've seen the ups and the downs. And because I learned very early on that fundamental analysis drives institutional investment decisions Technical analysis is really your salvation in a bear market because um, if you haven't lived through a bear market and since the market made its low in March of 2009 after the financial collapse, we've basically been straight up ever since except for the energy sector which had its own bear market in 2014 and 15. But I've learned how important it is to use technical analysis in combination with fundamental analysis to protect client assets, to protect your own assets, to have an independent view of the way things are going that's not just fundamentally or quantitatively driven. Along the way, I've been mentored, and mentoring is really important. That's part of the reason that Nick suggested that we do this webinar. We want to be there as mentors for the next generation of Wall Street professionals or individual investors. Uh, because along the way, I've been mentored by some of the smartest and most successful institutional investors. And the reason that's important, some of them, by the way, were colleagues and some of them were clients of mine when we had an institutional brokerage firm in the late uh, 1980s and early 1990s. The reason this is important is twofold. A, you always want to look when you move on from your college uh, days to the business world for a mentor. Uh, I've been fortunate to have people at every stage of my career mentor me. It's made a big difference in my career and it gave me an awful lot of confidence that I could do uh, what I wanted to do. Look for a mentor when you get out into the business world. Very important. People are willing to do that. There's a perception out there that Wall Street is a hard ass place. I'm here to tell you that people want to be relevant. They want to help you. So look for a mentor. In relation to Chaken Analytics and what we're going to be talking about on today's webinar, the reason that my exposure to institutional investors of successful uh, careers is important is that everything I learned from these mentors is embedded in the Chaikin Power Gauge rating that I created in 2010, this 20 factor quantitative model that many of you are familiar with. It's really the culmination of my life's work. It's my story. It was my ultimate goal. I came out of retirement after a 10 year retirement and the financial collapse of 08 because I felt that individual investors needed better tools to take back control of their own financial future. We've accomplished that goal. 
We're very grateful for the opportunity that StockTrack has given us to give back a little to the next generation of Wall Street professionals. And we've also been blessed in that a number of large financial institutions like the Paulson Hedge Fund and Soros and Fidelity Investment Management are using Chaikin. We've also been fortunate to be quoted in the press. Just yesterday, Jim Cramer on uh, the floor of the New York Stock Exchange said uh, in response to a question about a tech stock called NVIDIA, which is a chip manufacturer that many of you may be familiar with, that Mark Chaikin uh, is bearish on the stock. and He's a technician that I have a lot of respect for. So we've been really blessed with some very good publicity. Barron's called us the uh, one of the two top quantitative sites on the internet. And the reason this is important is as a stock track participant, you have access to these tools for the duration of your semester. So uh, if you're going to do another semester with stock track or you're working with the tools, you're working with the same tools that Wall Street professionals are using. Now, this webinar is about focus. I can't stress enough how important focus is to success in the investment business. We live in the age of distraction. How many of you are involved with Facebook or Snapchat or LinkedIn, uh, Twitter and so forth? Uh, when I ask that question to everybody from retired people to novice investors, everybody is involved with one of these social media outlets uh, and add in email and you have a prescription for disaster because you're gonna lose focus and focus is absolutely critical. And what we're gonna talk about in the next 10 or 12 slides is how to focus in this age of distraction. And focus basically starts with a process. And you can improve your trading and your investing by having a plan that combines fundamentals with technicals by doing a top-down analysis, which is what the big institutional investors do. So in this webinar, we're going to briefly touch on putting the wind at your sails in your sails. I think we have a misspelling here. That should be S-A-I-L-S, Mr. Webb. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, you can see that we're, we're pretty relaxed around here. You want to put the wind at your back. Uh, by focusing on strong sectors and industry groups. This is the way the big Wall Street investment firms, the uh, Fidelities, the T. Rowe Prices, the Invescos, the big hedge funds uh, make their investment decisions. They start with what's known as a top-down view. We make it very easy in Chaikin Analytics to know which sectors and industry groups are likely to outperform or underperform the market by using our Chaikin power gauge in a roll-up mode. We're going to show you how to find bulls and bears with a combination of the Chaikin power gauge and Chaikin relative strength. This is how we give you an edge, and this is how we're giving institutional and individual investors an edge by combining technical and fundamental analysis. We're going to show you Chaikin Money Flow, which, believe it or not, has been in the marketplace for 35 years. It's on every online brokerage site. I know many of you trade on Thinkorswim or Fidelity or Schwab. It's also on stockcharts.com, so it's available for free on the most widely followed technical site on the internet. We're going to show you how to dramatically improve your timing with buy and sell signals that help better time exits and entries. And most importantly, and if you take one thing away from this webinar and nothing else, it's that playing good defense, avoiding landmines that can destroy portfolios is more important than playing good offense. They, also, they always say in the football uh, world that defense wins Super Bowls. And we saw, we've seen that many times in the last 10 years. Uh, great offense is a wonderful thing to have, but defense is what wins Super Bowls. I know that because when I moved to Philadelphia in 2006, Philadelphia got to the Super Bowl first time in, I think, a couple of decades because they had a great defensive coordinator, Jim Johnson. Sadly, Jim Johnson died of cancer. And guess what? Philadelphia went downhill from that point on because defense was not their primary focus. So let's get right into it and start talking about our core piece of intellectual property, the real root of our success here at Chaikin Analytics. And we've grown from two people to 28 people over the last uh, six and a half years, uh, servicing customers, creating products. They're all 
centered around the Chaikin power gauge rating. It's a 20 factor quantitative model. And if you're not familiar with quantitative models, I think there's a question box where you can type it in and Joe Bacella will answer some of your questions or point you to some research. But basically the power gauge rating is a simple display, but a very reliable indication of a stock's potential to outperform or underperform the market. And here's where we get back to what I talked about uh, on that first slide. The mentoring that I was the recipient of enabled me to see how successful institutional investors view the market, what factors and metrics they looked at before they made an investment decision to buy or sell a stock. What we've done is to take the results of a one-year research project that ended in September of 2010, which distilled 200 factors that I started with down to 20, grouped them into four components so that they made some sort of sense, applied different weights to each of these factors, the end result being the Chaikin power gauge rating. It's a very simple display, as you can see on the left here of this power gauge display for United Health. But under the surface, there's a lot going on. I like to say on these webinars that the Chaikin power gauge rating is like a Chevrolet with a Ferrari engine under the hood. And just to look a little bit more deeply at these factors, financial metrics, which don't change very often, are the value metrics that a Warren Buffett looks at. They represent 35% of the model. But value metrics, as I learned in a 50-year career on Wall Street, are not for everybody. So you have value investors who can live through a lot of pain as they perceive uh, an industry like energy or a particular stock in the energy uh, sector is attractive. They're willing to live with some pain uh, that a lot of other investors aren't willing to live with. Therefore, you have to look at other factors. So the earnings uh, component is something that Jim Cramer talks about on CNBC. We've boxed earnings surprise because this is really critical and we're heading into earnings season. Now, how many of you know what earnings season means? If you do type a big E into our question box, please. Because most companies report on a calendar year basis means uh, that their year ends on 1231. Four times a year, they're required by the SEC to report earnings as a public company. That happens in April, July, September and January. Actually, it's October and January. So on April 13th, companies are going to start releasing their first quarter earnings reports. Companies will either disappoint Wall Street analysts or they'll surprise on the upside. And that's known as an earnings surprise. What I learned from one of my mentors, George Douglas at Drexel Burnham in the mid 80s, who's still running quant money 30 years later, is that Earning surprises come in bunches. You don't just get one earning surprise and then a positive or negative and then go back to business as usual. They come in bunches and that's important to know because that's one of the 20 factors in the model. But more importantly, when companies report positive or negative earning surprises, it causes Wall Street analysts to raise or lower their estimates. Now, there's been a lot of um, social acclaim for a site called Estimize, which claims that the average investor uh, does a better job than Wall Street analysts. But the bottom line is Wall Street analysts have a pipeline into, into the institutional investment community. So if an analyst at Goldman Sachs or Morgan Stanley or UBS raises his earnings estimate on Apple or lowers his earnings estimate on CarMax, it causes ripple effect in the stock market. So if analysts are raising their estimates on Apple because they had a better than expected quarter, then you're going to see some buying and buy recommendations coming out of firms like UBS and Goldman Sachs. And, the, and it works even more dramatically on the downside. So 20 factors, we call this an eclectic model. What I would define as a religious model would be a pure value model or a growth at a reasonable price model that's known as GARP. Maybe you've studied that in one of your classes. Uh, you have earnings momentum investors. This is an eclectic model. It finds a lot of ways to like or not like a stock's potential over the next three to 12 months. So it finds a lot of 
different types of stocks to like. And I view that as one of the uh, sort of robust uh, aspects of the Chaikin Power Gauge rating. Now, performance is everything. So we use the Russell 3000 as our universe. We've had seven years of real-time performance. This chart combines the back-tested performance back to 1999 with the real-time performance. Now, I will tell you that as you get into the investment world, you will never see a presentation where someone says, my back-tested performance really isn't very good, but I'm confident that this model's gonna work going forward. So I've taken a little bit of a liberty here. Back-tested results always look good, otherwise you'd never see them. But the reality is that since we launched our first commercially available product in January of 2011, six, six and a half years ago, the results of the very bullish stocks down to the very bearish have seen the same shape of the curve. When you're looking at a quantitative model, you wanna see a stair step. So the very bullish stocks in the Russell 3000, 428 of them at any given point in time, have averaged a 20% annualized return, and that means that you've encompassed two bear markets, 2000 to 2002, 2008 to 2009, and a mini bear market uh, in, in 2011 when you were down 19.9%, and then a bear market in energy. Through all that, look at the spread between the very bullish stocks that are down on balance over the 17 year period and the very bullish stocks. If you can capture that spread by avoiding the very bearish stocks in your portfolio, weeding them out when a bullish stock goes bearish, and focusing your new purchases on very bullish stocks, you're putting the odds in your favor. That's putting the wind at your back, which is a nice complement to being in the strongest sectors and industry groups. Now, I wanted to share with you a little bit of our thinking about where the market's headed. We have three proprietary indicators within Chaikin that help you cut through the clutter and have a good sense of where the market's going. So check and money flow is my way to measure what institutions are doing in the marketplace. As I said, it's been available for 35 years. You can see it on stockcharts.com or if you have an online brokerage platform, or of course, if you're using check and analytics, it's right there for you. It measures institutional buying and selling. Looks back over 21 days. Since the election, in November, check and money flow has been very, very positive. Big mounds of green. Even as we've sold off here for the past five weeks, check and money flow has stayed green. That tells us institutional investors are using dips in the market to add to their equity exposure to buy stocks. And they use the SPY as a quick and dirty way to get exposed to the stock market uh, quickly as they pour over uh, balance sheets or if they're using the check and power gauge, use our 20 factor model to decide what stocks to own. So if you look at the check and money flow for the spider, the SPY ETF for the S&P 500, which is the most actively traded instrument in the US markets, you can get a sense of whether institutions are buying stocks or selling them on balance. The next thing we have is what we call the check and power bar. That's right here in the middle. We look at the number of stocks that have a bullish check in power gauge rating versus a bearish power gauge rating. It's a sort of look under the hood of the 500 stocks in the S&P. And when more stocks have a bullish than a bearish rating, I know this doesn't add up to 500, but it should, because there are, there'd be a more neutral stocks there. If you have more bullish, stocks, meaning that these stocks have the potential to do well than bearish, that's a healthy sign. And so by comparing the power bar with the price action of the S&P 500 or the Spider ETF, you can get a sense of whether the market is likely to continue in the direction it's going. And then finally, this is really um, a very powerful indicator that very few investors and traders know about. The S&P 500 is a capitalization weighted index which means that Amazon, Apple, Netflix, Procter & Gamble, the big companies have a much bigger impact. But there is an equal weighted S&P. And it comes from a company called Guggenheim. It has about two or $3 billion in assets. So it's an actively traded ETF. And that views every stock in the S&P as equal in terms of its impact on price. What 
we've learned is that over the last 10 years, when the average stock in the S&P is outperforming the index itself, that's healthy for the market. And when the average stock in the S&P 500 is underperforming the index, that's headwinds and resistance. And for the last month and a half, we've had the average stock in the S&P underperforming. Why? Because Apple is making new all-time highs. Amazon is making new all-time highs. A lot of the uh, Facebook is doing well. A lot of the tech stocks that have the huge market caps that have an undue influence over the S&P 500 are what's driving the index to new highs in late February and keeping it up. Whereas the average stock in the S&P, even though it's a large cap company, is underperforming. That's why the market's having so much trouble getting through the 2400 level on the S&P. So three proprietary indicators in Chaikin Analytics. Uh, on balance, uh, two out of three are bullish. So uh, we know that the market overall is attractive from a buying perspective, but it's going to run into resistance because the weight is being borne by these four or five stocks, affectionately known as the FANG stocks, Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, and Google with Apple thrown in. Uh, when they dominate, that's not good for the health of the market. And that's what's happening right now. It can, it can be overcome, but it means that rallies are going to run into resistance. So let's look at the likely scenario for 2017, because this sets the overview for the decisions you're going to make in your stock track portfolio. The average um, profitable returns in the market, this is a chart courtesy of Bank America, Merrill Lynch. There are two bullish scenarios for the stock market. The most bullish is falling interest rates and rising earnings. That's what we had when the market bottomed out in 2009 through 2014. But there's another bullish scenario, and it comes when the economy is growing. Because when the economy is growing, uh, you tend to get a little bit of inflation, and you get the Fed raising interest rates to make sure the economy doesn't grow too fast. So. The second bullish scenario is higher interest rates and rising earnings. And that's the scenario we were in in the second half of 2016. And that's the scenario we're in today. The reason that's important is you're going to read stuff in the press about how rising interest rates can uh, uh, cut PE ratios and so forth. The reality is that over 75 years, this is also a very bullish scenario. And it's bullish because it means the economy is growing. And that's a good thing. So what we've done is to take some studies that have looked at which sectors perform well during periods of rising interest rates and which underperform. And over 72 years, since 1945, the sectors that do well in a rising interest rate environment are what are known as the cyclical sectors. They are sensitive to the fluctuations in the economy financials, industrials, technology, materials, and energy. The only one of those five that's not outperforming right now is energy and energy is in a disconnect period because of this wild swings in the price of crude oil over the last three years but the other four sectors are the ones that have been leading the market since november when donald trump got elected on the other hand the stocks that do poorly in a rising interest rate environment utilities telecoms consumer staples and healthcare. these are known as defensive stocks they're interest rate sensitive this is where people went all through 2016 to look for yield in a zero interest rate environment. And now they're doing relatively poorly. The outlier is consumer discretionary. Uh, and a good uh, case in point now is that the consumer discretionary sector is being dominated by Amazon. And Amazon, as many of you know, is breaking the whole retail sales model in the US because of their success at uh, same day and next day delivery and the ability to um, get the best price uh, without having to go mall shopping. So consumer discretionary has always been an outlier, more so now that Amazon is in charge. So I'd like to end by showing you what we call the classic chicken bull. This basically sums up the whole top-down discipline methodology that Chaikin has been talking about to individual investors and institutional investors for the last six years. It starts with the power gauge rating. As I said in the beginning, that's our go-to indicator. It is an indicator that does the fundamental heavy lifting for you. We had one 
intern at Chaikin here about three years ago. He was at the uh, Fisher School at Ohio State the business school. He was an active trader. He scheduled all of his classes to begin after four o'clock so he could trade all day. And we loved him so much in the correspondence that we had that we hired him as an intern, got him an apartment in Philadelphia for the summer. And he used to say, Mark, I would spend two hours researching a stock and the power gauge rating does it all for me now. He said, I can follow many more stocks and be much more reliable in the conclusions that I draw and the stocks that I'm trading or investing in. So it starts with the Chaikin power gauge rating. That's at the bottom of this one year chart. In this case, we're using AMAT as our classic Chaikin bull. We love to see a stock that's outperforming the market with strong Chaikin money flow, indicating that the institutions are accumulating the stock. So we've blown up this one year chart to go into a little bit of depth on it, and then I'm gonna turn this webinar over to Nick Webb. At the bottom is the Chaikin Power Gauge rating. We're looking at AMAT, it's in the semiconductor area. It's had a bullish power gauge rating off and on for over a year. This goes from red to yellow to green. If you were looking at CarMax, you'd see a red rating. They're reporting earnings before the opening tomorrow with a very negative story in Barron's. So very often the power gauge rating is ahead of the press and ahead of Wall Street. But when the power gauge rating is bullish and the stock is outperforming the market, we say that the market agrees with the model. Now, how do we know that the stock's outperforming the market? Well, we've taken what Investors Business Daily or some of the other services have created, which is output as a number. In the case of Investors Business Daily, they rate relative strength on a number from one to 99. From my point of view, that just contributes to information overload. And we've converted it into a red-green heat map. So very easily, once you see that the power gauge is bullish, you look right above it, and that's the relative strength of AMAT to the SPY. And it's been green. So this stock has been outperforming the market for well over a year. That can end at any time, but doesn't seem to have happened yet. And then right here we have Chagin money flow and you can see these big, big mountains of green as the stock has gone through accumulation. Now it's normal for the Chagin money flow to go red or negative when the stock has been under pressure. So that's not a turnoff if the other two indicators are bullish, but when they're all in gear, you've got what Warren Buffett calls the ideal setup or the fat pitch. Warren Buffett has famously said that they don't call balls and strikes on Wall Street, so you don't have to swing at every pitch. And this is the embodiment of that. So the final two pieces of the puzzle are our signals, which are what we call low risk entry points. They work about two thirds of the time in the case of this oversold buy signal, which happens when you make a new eight day low in a stock with a bullish power gauge rating. So again, we're trying to put the odds in our favor. Power gauge rating bullish, strong industry group, semiconductors. You get a signal, the odds are in your favor. The final piece of the puzzle, we talked about how important earnings surprises are. We label the earnings icon red, gray, or green, depending on whether the company outperform Wall Street estimates or underperform. We show you the earnings date on the top. So if you happen to have AMAT in one of your portfolios, the next reporting date is May 18th. We have a green exclamation point, which means that the expectation is that they're going to have yet another quarter with a positive earnings surprise. And look what happens when everything's lined up and you get a positive earnings surprise. Four times in a row, the stock spiked up and just continued higher. Now that doesn't always happen. Sometimes traders will sell that spike. But here you've got a record of four quarters in a row and it goes back almost eight quarters and we don't show that on the one year chart where AMAT has reported earnings that are better than Wall Street expectations. That leads analysts to raise their earnings estimates and creates a ripple effect in the institutional community because it takes time for this to filter through. And this is the whole Chaikin picture in one chart. That's how easy investing can be or trading if you're more short-term oriented. You don't have to overcomplicate it. Nick's gonna show you in a minute how to use the platform. It's really simple. The user interface was created by people a lot younger than Nick and I because we want something that 
works for you. And if it works for you, it's going to work for all of our clients across a broad spectrum of demographics and age. Uh, so I thank you very much for uh, giving us the opportunity to show you the Chaikin methodology and share a little of our market insights. And now with great pleasure, I introduce Nick Webb, who's uh, going to do a hands-on demonstration of Chaikin analytics. Great. Thank you, Mark. Uh, it's always a pleasure to listen to Mark. I learn something every time I do this. So uh, once again, hang on a sec, just sharing my screen as we speak. Great. Okay, you're looking at the exact same stock that, that Mark ended on, Applied Materials, in the Chaikin Power, uh, the Chaikin Analytics software. Um, this is just a website, very easy to use. I'm going to take you through it a little bit. Um, but first, let me thank everybody for, for coming on and, and spending some time with us on what is a beautiful sunny day in the Northeast. Hopefully, everybody will have some time to enjoy the weather. Um, what I'm going to try and do is not really spend a lot of time on exactly using the software, but instead working on building a process that you can use to win your stock contest. Ultimately, my objective here is to have each one of you on this webinar win your, your, semester, your classmates and outperform all of them. And then hopefully you'll send a testimonial to us that says you've had a great semester, Chicken Analytics helped you win the contest and you've been building great stocks. But more than that, you've actually learned how to have a very disciplined process to select stocks, but also put in place to sell discipline. As Mark said, you know, we'll talk and off and everybody does. We always talk about what stocks to buy, but the people that are really successful in the street, and I've, I've worked with a number of them, all of them have a sell discipline. So it's very important that we talk about that as well, and we will. Um, but what I'm going to do in the next half hour before I, we let you go is I'm going to walk through exactly how we can use Chaikin Analytics to do all that process, that discipline process that Mark talked about. Take a look at it from a top down, understanding what sectors are hot, which ones aren't, which ones we should avoid. Going through a screening process so that we'll put in place a, uh, a strategy. Analyzing an individual stock, taking a look at things that go on, and then ultimately, once we bought it, putting it into a portfolio and analyzing it and make sure that we don't lose our money uh, on the, the, the flip side. So if we do all that correctly in half an hour, that's a major win. And I think uh, hopefully you'll find that this is really, really valuable to your process. So let's spend just two seconds on the overall workspace, what it looks like, uh, because it's a little bit clearer, hopefully, in the screen now. Um, now that it's live. First of all, this is the power gauge rating as it, ex as it sits currently for applied material. So you can see that we're still very bullish. Um, you can see over here, this is the pricing for today. And if I want to look down further into the power gauge, what's making it up, I can click this little down arrow and that'll add more information to my screen that talks about, well, what's really driving the power gauge rating you can see that it's an earnings powerhouse, and it also the experts are behind it as well. Other than that, the technicals aren't necessarily really in its favor, and the financials are so-so. So what's really driving it is it's earning, and it's earning fast, and the experts are raising their estimates. Uh, insiders may be buying more of the stock, et cetera. You can drill into any of those. So if you want to find out what's going on with the experts, you can just click that button. And then these are the five factors that make up that experts trend. Now, there are so many products out there in the marketplace that allow you to do screening. But what this allows you to do, if you will, is get a head start because the Chaikin Power Gauge rating takes 20 factors, lumps them all together, does an amazing amount of research on them, and basically for every stock in our universe, gives you a Power Gauge rating. So. You, if you just search on very bullish stocks in your power, you know, when we're doing screening, that alone is going to save you just mounds of trouble. You're going to be in reasonably good stocks. And then when you combine it with everything else that we'll talk about, you can see where you can develop a real winning strategy. So anyway, that's the power gauge rating. I'm going to push this back up for a second. Um, and then just for the remainder of the screen, this is, 
the power gauge rating over time. And it's a good way of just doing a quick visual back test. Does the power gauge rating work? And you'll find stock after stock that when it turns green, all of a sudden it gets a nice bull run. So, you know, we're being very transparent here by showing the historical power gauge ratings over time so that you can decide whether this is indeed something that's working on this particular stock. As Mark said, you've got the relative strength right above it. You've got an overbought, oversold indicator um, that really talks about, you know, how the stock is oscillating and whether, you know, it could be a time to go into the stock. I'm not going to spend a lot of time with that today. Money flow, institutional money flow. If you don't have institutions buying the stock, you're, you're really selling or you're buying into a, uh, into a hard current. You want the current behind you and money flow, if it's green like this, that means you've got institutions buying. So if you buy the stock, there will be people following up behind you buying it, hopefully at higher prices, and they'll be buying large quantities. So again, if the institutions aren't buying your stock, that's probably a sign that you need to be a little careful. So that's the overall sort of workspace that we have on individual stocks. I'm just gonna point out one other feature before we go in and really try and put a strategy in place, is if you look up here, there's something called product resources. And what that does is it'll, in, you can invite yourself to webinars that teach you how to use this, uh, the software better. If you go into the resource center, there's a whole bunch of material there that will help you use Chaken Analytics better. This is a treasure trove of different things that you can use to get smarter about stocks. So really recommend spending a little time with that. Uh, so we're back on this. Um, Let's, let's do a, just a quick review on the process. We're gonna do a top-down analysis, take a look at some sectors, then we're gonna shop around. We're gonna look for stocks that look undervalued uh, or that have excellent power gauge ratings and other items that we're gonna look at. Uh, we're gonna cheat. We're gonna cheat to make you the number one students in your class by showing you earnings surprise and really focus on uh, how, again, I don't know how often you can trade in and out of the market, but you can essentially anticipate which stocks have tremendous earnings surprise potential. And we'll show you how to do that. And you can, you can dip into the market as well uh, to pick up good stocks during the earnings surprise season. Um, and we'll show you that. And you can do it a number of times during your semester. And that should put you over the top. Finally, once we've selected a few stocks, we're gonna look at the technicals, the money flow, and the relative strengths to make sure that they line up. And then we'll essentially buy them, put them in our portfolio, and then monitor them. So that's gonna be the process we look at. So let's start just top of the market. Just like Mark did, he put in SPY and took a look at it. And you know, we'll, we'll do the exact same thing. We treat SPY, which is an ETF, almost as if it's a, a stock unto itself. And again, you can sort of see that the money flows dwindled away a little bit during this sort of uh, retrenchment over the last week or so. But in general, it's been very healthy money flow. And you can see that the stock has, has, uh, has done terrifically well. Um, the next thing is once you've sort of just taken a look at the market as a whole, it's probably worth taking a look at which sectors, and e sectors you wanna be uh, uh, looking at. Um, and again, this was something that Mark showed in his presentation, but this basically gives you the sectors that make up the S&P 500. And you can see which of these have stocks that are in the green part of the power bar, i.e. they're outperforming their, their mates. We've, we've rated them very highly. Um, and which one and how many negative uh, stocks are in that particular sector. And as you go down, you can see consumer, consumer staples really doesn't look that healthy right now. You'd stay away from that. Same with real estate, same with energy. But if you look up here, utilities is having a good run. Healthcare is having a good run. And financials is having an excellent run. If you look at financials, that's this blue line here. It was up around 30%. It's growth over the last six months. So really a tremendous run. It's come down to 21%. Um, what you still see, though, is that there's a lot of very healthy stocks in that index. 
So if you find the right stocks, you still, you know, you might have found it on a dip, which might provide you a good buying opportunity. So again, just a way of looking at uh, what's in those sectors and see if there are some sectors that you want to zoom in on. Um, so again, nice little top-down process. Now let's go into the screener and let's put a strategy into place. So I'm going over to screener and uh, let me just reset. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna screen on the Russell 3000. I'm gonna look for power gauge that's very bullish. And let's see, what else? I will look at ones that have a money flow that is very, uh, very strong. Actually, let's just go strong. Let's not. Um, and that have, we're going to go and we're going to go into the market cap and go to small and mid cap so that we, again, if you're, you're trying to get big gainers, there's usually more volatility, more up and down movement in small and mid caps. And they don't tend to be covered as well as the, the large caps. So again, in order to, to win the stock contest, I'm, I'm gonna put you guys in small and mid cap. Um, and then let's see, what else, anything else? Uh, oh yeah, why don't we go, and again, because we're sort of looking at uh, earnings surprise, let's, let's pick stocks that have a good history of earnings surprise, and again, because earnings season is just about to kick off, we're starting, we're at April 5th right now, probably in another week, you're gonna start seeing companies report earnings. This is a good strategy to put in place to have some nice short-term wins. So doing that, you know, it, it comes back and I've got 32 stocks, which probably is a little bit more than what I want. So I'm gonna boost this up to very strong and screen and see what that does. Ah. Mm, that's that's too light, I think. So let, let's go back down. Nick, let's why do don't it. you try using the relative strength, which is part of the Chaikin um, classic bull pattern, and that will probably get you what you want. Okay, so why don't I go back to, I'm going to take strong, and then I will go to rel oops, relative strength. Right under the money flow. Right under the money flow. Okay, so look at strong. Okay. Hmm. Anyway, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take these and I'm going to click on results and that brings them into the workspace so I can now work with these. Okay. So we now know that we've got stocks that are, you know, that are strong power gauge rating good relative strength, good money flow. We're, you know, a lot of things, it's sort of that Warren Buffett that there's a lot that we should like about these. Um, so let's, let's take a, a look at a couple of these. Um, you know, the, the very first one that's popped up is uh, System Max, but let's go and... Got a bank, a lot of banks. That's gonna be another bank. Okay, so here's a non-bank. Solid earnings, you can see. Uh, so each of these are green, they, they show good earnings surprise. And what you can see, is each time that there's a solid earnings surprise, like right here, it has a nice jump up. And over the last four times, three out of those four have been positive earnings surprises. And as uh, Mark said, the, the earnings surprises come in bunches. So if you like it, you should see it and be able to track it. Uh, and the next earnings surprise is May 3rd. So you can be ready for that and assume that should be good news if you're in it, you should be able to get a nice price impact from it. Um, so what do we do now? Uh, well, we could be happy with this or we could sort of say, well, 
I'd like to find more stocks that, that look like this, that might have uh, similar industry, similar characteristics um, that maybe I didn't find from the screening for whatever reason. So what I can do is I can, oops, let me just go back. Uh, I can put in MTOR into what we call our discovery engine. And what that'll do is it will spit out other companies in the same industry that have very similar uh, characteristics for that stock. And again, this may give you more names to look at to see if any of these are, uh, you know, other uh, purchase candidates. Um, so, and if you look here, it'll tell you why those stocks made it into the industry or into the discovery engine. So, Let's take a look at STS, for instance. Okay, this had a little bit more of a uh, broken track record. It had some uh, down periods where you can see the money flow flew out. And if you'd been using Shaken Analytics, you actually would have avoided that dip because you could have seen it went from bullish to neutral right before the, the, the spot down. But since then, it's been back on track. There are no earnings data, so let's Let's go back and go back to discovery. And, and this is a very, you know, you can go back and forth, take a look at Visteon. And again, the same kind of thing where you actually see some really nice earnings, surprises, uh, you know, nice little uh, punch up after the, the most recent earnings surprise, another Nice move after that, the earnings surprise before that. So again, this might be a stock that I'd be really interested in putting in my portfolio. You can see it's now bullish. It's got good relative strength. Money flow, however, is out. So again, uh, let's, uh, let's go on the assumption that we want to have everything in our uh, disposal. Let's, let's take a step back and let's look again into the discovery. Um, you know, I was doing this earlier and I came across a stock. Uh, let's just put in manpower for a second. Nick, while you're doing that, can I make a comment, please? Of course. Uh, the discovery engine works a very similar fashion to the way Spotify finds you music that you like or Netflix finds movies that you might be interested in or Amazon. It's a relevance-based discovery engine. It's really a breakthrough in terms of generating new ideas based on stocks that you like and know well or stocks you don't like. You may think that, um, you know, the retail stocks like Under Armour are bad buys. Well, you want to find out if there are other apparel stocks that have bad buys. So this functions very similarly to the way Spotify and Netflix does. It's really a breakthrough in terms of generating stock ideas. Right. Right. Thanks, Mark. Absolutely. It's, it's, and it's a lot of fun to use. So again, I would not have normally come to a firm like Maximus. I didn't know a lot about it. Um, but you can see it's got everything going in the right direction. It's, it's very bullish. It's got high relative strength, you know, for the last month and a half. It's got money flow moving in the right direction. As a matter of fact, there's an indicator that says that there's a money flow buy. Uh, but let's look at the earnings surprise on, on Maximus um, because every single earnings surprise has been green and has massive price impacts. This is a great stock to be in ahead of the earnings season. So again, May 4th uh, is when that this will uh, trigger earnings. And, you know, this should be, again, if you believe what's going on, this should be a stock that will trigger a nice price impact. If you look a little deeper under the covers of why Chaken Analytics has given it a good power rating, you can see earnings are top of the chart. Everything else is good, but earnings are the real key to it, uh, earning that, that uh, bullish, very bullish uh, rating. It's in a strong industry and it's got a great trend. So, Again, it sort of fits all the criteria, and that would be one that I would absolutely want to put into my portfolio. So if I 
actually type that in. I'm going to add that to my portfolio. Let's just say that I have now bought MMS along with all these other stocks. And you can see now that was the offensive side. I used both screening and I used the discovery engine to look around, find stocks that have good power gauge rating, good relative strength, good money flow, has some positive earnings surprise that I can play around with. And now I've got to look at all the rest of the stocks in my portfolio and make sure I'm understanding, you know, am I at risk for uh, a negative surprise? Remember, sell discipline is more than half the battle. Um, and even though I may have had some stocks in here that I really liked, um, there are some that have begun to turn on me, including Verizon, for instance. And maybe it's time to take a harder look at Verizon. So, you know, whether it's once a week, once a month, you should look at this. And as you see companies that are beginning to move out of your comfort zone, um, this is one that I would take a look at and sort of say, is it worth uh, me jettisoning it from my portfolio? Um, so you going along that left-hand list, sorting by power gauge rating allows me to go through this. And I can see very quickly that there's almost nothing to like about Verizon. Um, we're having a request now to look at AEIS. Um, let me get to that uh, at the end here. Um, but you can see negative power gauge rating, negative rel relative strength. You can see the money flow is beginning to dwindle out so that there's no institutional money flow. This might be one. Had a very bad uh, earnings surprise in the most recent quarter. It's reporting again in just a few days. This would be one that I'd want to get out of now before it reports again, disappoints the market, and there's further down to it. So again, that's, that's one of the ways that you might play defense. Another way that sums that up in a sort of more easy to use is what we call a portfolio health check. That's over here. Uh, that just gives you a sort of a, you know, how did your portfolio do in the last week? What are the stocks that impacted it positively, which were negative? Oh, look, there's Verizon not helping me out at all. Uh, and, you know, here are some of the estimate revisions that went on last week. Not a lot of them going in the right direction, I got to say. <laughs> I got to look at my portfolio a little bit more uh, seriously. And then ultimately, you know, what are the strong industry groups that, I, that are working in my favor versus, uh, you know, and you can see that some of them are. Uh, but there are some weak groups over here um, that aren't helping me in terms of electrical machinery. Uh, what stocks are bullish, which stocks are neutral, and then what stocks do I really have to pay attention to? It sort of sums it all up, you know, and, and this is probably something that once a week you should be in and just sort of understand exactly how your portfolio has been impacted by the market over the last week. Um, so, Let's just uh, do a quick recap. We wanted to put together a, you know, in half an hour, a very disciplined buying process, which we went through. We showed you how to screen for a stock, what the things we are that we want, what things we wanted to look at in particular, the power gate trading, the relative strength, the money flow. And we also wanted to just do a quick check to make sure earnings surprise was moving in the right direction. We've done all that. We picked a couple stocks. We've then done some monitoring of this, this, the portfolio to make sure we know what's being impacted, what has all of a sudden turned against me that I've got to look at and possibly jettison. Um, so that was really what I wanted to show you in this, uh, in this half hour. Um, so now I will honor the, the question that came in over the transom. Uh, it's AEIS. Just go through that real quick, just, and it sort of reinforces everything we've, we've gone through. So this is a great looking stock. Uh, great power gauge rating, excellent relative strength. You could get some better money flow, but it, it you know, it's, it's very bullish rating, good earnings surprise. You can see, this is a great one for uh, impact, price impact. You can see nice little, you know, after each earnings surprise, which has been positive, 
had a nice little uh, move on that that you could take advantage of. And so, Nick, w Nick, why don't you go to the signals and put up the relative strength by cells because this is going to show some extraordinary entry points. If you are trying to build your portfolio, uh, look for these relative strength buys. They tend to last four to eight weeks. There's actually only one of them. Uh, maybe the overbought, uh, buy sig oversold buy signals uh, would, would give us more. But these signals can really help you time your exits and entries. Oh, so it's just not giving us those signals. One more. Try the money flow by, please. <laughs> okay. Usually we get more of them, but uh, there we go. There we go. Yeah. So that's why just... that's why we have six pairs of them because you never know which one's going to trigger. Well, and it's interesting. It seems like the 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 money flow is coming in right before earnings season. So uh, we may not be the only people playing this game. Uh, with this stock. So, but again, this looks like a great stock. So thanks for uh, highlighting it. Um, so with, uh, with our time winding down, I just wanted to uh, thank everybody for coming. I did want to sort of say that if you like what you saw here, let's go back to the, uh, there is one last slide I'd like to put up. So, just, oh, you're not seeing that. No, you are seeing, okay. So I just wanted to say, uh, you know, good luck for the rest of the semester. Um, if you want, we have just literally released something called Power Feed, which is a, uh, it's an email that comes out once a day. It is a, right before the market opens. It summarizes, summarizes the markets with a lot of good graphics and uh, visual information. It takes about a minute to read it. and it'll give you some very actionable trading ideas. So uh, sign, can't recommend that you sign up for that enough. Um, you should definitely do it. And then ultimately, when you do win your, uh, your stock contest for the semester, please write us back and let us know that you did it and that Chicken Analytics was instrumental in, in helping you get there. Um, but with that, I guess I turn it back to Joe Bacella to uh, close this all up. All right. <clears throat> okay, gentlemen, thank you so much uh, for your presentation this afternoon. Um, again, as a final reminder, I know there's a few more questions that are trickling in, but um, with that said, make sure to take advantage of the support that we do provide to all of our subscribers, um, just simply by making your way to the upper right corner of your page. And again, uh, just to emphasize what Nick and uh, what Mark mentioned, make your way to the Resource Center. You will find a lot of great support content here. So uh, in the meantime, keep an eye out for a recording of this webinar. We're going to send this out tomorrow morning. In the meantime, have a great evening and we'll see you soon. Thanks.